All right, a big announcement from Ford coming in last night. The company will be importing its next generation Lincoln Nautilus from China to the United States. Yahoo Finance Senior Autos reporter Praz Ramadian here with the details. Hello, my friend. What are we learning? Hey, so, you know, just last night they had the reveal of this car in New York City and simultaneously in China at the Shanghai Auto Show. Uh, interesting enough. So we saw this in, in, in the flesh. It's actually a very good looking SUV, very sleek, sporty, uh, new inside and out. I would say it almost has like a Range Rover Sport-esque kind of look to it. Inside, I was kind of shocked to see this fully wrap around digital display across the entire dash, including in the passenger's area. I was very impressed by that. Uh, kind of gives you an idea where the brand is going in the future, but you mentioned that car built in China, but also a new powertrain there, a hybrid powertrain. I spoke to uh, Lincoln President Diane Craig about why that's so important for their customers. Certainly in the medium premium utility where Nautilus competes, being able to offer gas and a hybrid alternative for our customers, you know, is, is really important to our customers right now. You know, today 75% of consumers are still choosing between gas and hybrid engines and, and we're really pleased to have that alternative for our customers. So that hybrid powertrain sort of bridging the gap to when, when Lincoln will be fully electric by 2030. Pause, what was behind the move, I guess, in terms of why they outsource the production to China and the potential risk of that, if any? So Lincoln says that they had to kind of retool the existing Nautilus factory in Canada for its further for its future EV. So they went to China where they're already making the Nautilus for the Chinese market there. So they decided to just, you know, kind of build both cars there for both markets in China. But the issue, you're absolutely right. UAW says this is a stab in the back, right? Why are they doing this? They could have probably built this, this car in the U.S. But if you're Ford, you can build it cheaply. I saw the car in pre-production form look, looked actually pretty nice. I'm not sure if customers actually care. I mean, Buick, so Buick's envisions made in China. People don't talk about that. I think this might be more the norm uh, going forward for luxury cars, at least. Still, the story dominating the auto industry is who can and who cannot get that $7,500 mm -hmm. tax credit uh, as related to EVs. What's kind of been the, the aftermath of the decision we heard yesterday? Are there certain winners and losers? Are we learning more on day two? Just hearing more about the, the, the U.S. automakers with clear winners here because they have not only the production capability here, but also they're building the batteries and they have better access to resources in this country. So GM, big winner, uh, Ford, of course, and, and Tesla. Those are your three big winners there for this. And I think you're just seeing that doubling down here. And losers, Kia, Hyundai. Yeah, Hyundai, Rivian too, because they, they outsource their batteries from, I'm not sure where, but the Treasury Department knows. Um, you know, let's see, also I would say some of maybe, some, you had a lot of Audis, a lot of Volvos, a lot of those companies that have their own EVs, they, they're no longer qualifying for that. Yeah, certainly a disadvantage for those. Mm -hmm. All right, Pras. Great stuff. Thank you.